Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a very exciting coffee chat with one of my besties off camera too, Catherine Edwards over across the pond. How are you doing this morning, Catherine? Our afternoon for you. I'm good. I am good. I've been so enjoying this shadow work challenge. It's something that I've been working on for years myself. I will be working continuing to work on for years but what is different about this one is the community that you've created and the fact that you're going through it together it's a creative <laughs> yeah i just it just we've thought so much by so for the last couple of years about the importance of community and the fact that you've got this up and running you've got these people the people in the signal group are just amazing the participation the honest sharing i'm just thinking this is what this is what it means to create our new future. I'm this just... is a great awakening. And, yeah. uh, and, that's, and it is amazing because we know we have over 500 people around the globe participating right now. And we have almost 200 people in the signal group who are constantly checking in with each other. And I was telling you this morning before we started uh, filming, Catherine, one of the biggest breakthroughs, I think that especially for Westerners, is to accept that where we're not comfortable is where we need to lean into the work. And nothing is greater than the physical exercise to show you that, that, and, and I, it, it's funny, I always say like Guruji used to say that, you know, 99% practice, 1% theory, because when we talk about the theory of this, it makes sense. But when we put yeah. it to practice, that's when it becomes a shit show. That's when you become the hot, I've been saying it's the hot mess express, you know, because you're actually having to feel the triggers, feel the emotions. And you, you know, now you intellectually know now I can't run from this. If I run from this, it's not going to get sorted. But if I lean into it and I allow myself to feel the pain, to feel it, I can actually, you know, that's why we call exorcisms, exorcism. They're exercising whatever it is out of you you're giving yourself an exorcism and i've i've noticed one thing i i see people in the signal group say you know i only made it 30 minutes through this exercise today but i'm gonna do the the, the rest of it next time and i want to say but you did 30 minutes more today than you did yesterday absolutely and um and before guys before we get into the deeper conversation i just want to go ahead and remind you guys um we know shadow banning is very real and I know that people are um, telling me that they've realized they've been unsubscribed to my channel because they stopped getting notifications and they go and check and realize they've been unsubscribed. Catherine nor I are unsubscribing you. This is just something that is happening. So go make sure you are still subscribed to Catherine Edwards. And then, of course, with my channel, I actually... Yesterday, there was a huge conversation about Mullah Bundan. I am heavily shadow banned. But yesterday, mm -hmm. I put up a video where I actually go into the, I filmed myself doing bar. So I could show you guys, and it's early in the morning, so it's dark, but you can see the sweat. And I actually talk you through some of the movements. So if that's something you're still confused about and you missed it yesterday, I'll link that down below. Um, I, I realized that I had overcome a lot of insecurity to be able to film myself doing this, but to kind of talk you through some of those movements. So that's up for you guys. Um, if that's something that you've been questioning, the, the control of Malabunda, just go and, and you can watch it on my channel. But now let's get to the nitty gritty of what we're actually going to talk about. And that is kickboxing. And mm -hmm. I, yesterday, Catherine and I were texting about what are we going to talk about? What are we going to, because we always think about a topic to talk about. And I, last minute, I was like, Catherine, I want to talk about kickboxing. Because you're a kickboxer. And when I put kickboxing on the, I picked four different modalities of exercise, yoga, bar, kickboxing, and dance. Now, bar and yoga are the things that work on me. But I, I've done kickboxing before. I like this particular girl because she doesn't use equipment. So you don't have to stress about not having an equ equipment. Um, but I know kickboxing works with other people. And holy shit, excuse my language, but holy shit. The kickboxing, surprising to me, was what really rocked people's world this week. They did it on Wednesday, and they're doing it today as well. So, Catherine, explain your experiences with kickboxing. Well, I must say I'm very much an amateur kickboxer. So when I was younger and had more time to do stuff for myself, I used to play a lot of hockey, and I loved hockey. And to me, there's a lot of synergies between the kickboxing and the hockey. And then it was only earlier on this year when I sort of was saying to my daughter, I really want to get into something. And our local gym said had a beginner's kickboxing. So I thought beginner's. 
turns out half of them weren't. But anyway, we went along and we did have the pads and we did have the gloves. And I absolutely loved it. I've never done boxing before. But what gave it for me, and I think this will really tie in, we can go into our doshas as well with it, is what was really fantastic for me is I do a lot of exercise, but in our different lives, we do different exercises. So I don't do classes like the yoga and the bar, although I will talk through my experience of that in a minute. But I do a lot looking after my animals. So I do like a really long, fast hour and 45 minute walk every morning with the dogs. You can see that's why they're always so relaxed in the background. I'm lifting stuff with the horses. I'm doing the guinea pigs. I'm doing this. So I get out and do a lot of movement. But what the kickboxing does for me is my personality type is I do hold hold on to is the wrong word but a lot of my emotions express themselves in anger and what I find fantastic for the kickboxing is you literally get that physical release with it when you are really working it and for me it's a, a really constructive way to actually release emotions that you're holding in the body but also to um for self-protection as well so I love it being a female, you know, I love having some of those tools in my toolkits because, you know, I'm always walking over in the middle of nowhere on my own and quite often in the dark and things like this. So it's really wonderful to know that I've got some physical tools in my toolkit because you and I have talked quite a lot about how functional our bodies are. Could we survive if we have to? Let's say the shit really does hit the fan. And we do have to be growing our own vegetables, climbing up trees, doing this, chopping wood, etc. Is your body functional? And for me, the kickboxing is really, really, it serves a physical functionality, but an amazing emotional release. Yes. And you know what? It's so interesting. So I was just telling you, Catherine, before we started filming, I went ahead yesterday and filmed the next section of the half Thor material. And it's no coincidence that this came up. I, I always feel like spirit god is always working in our favor and they talk about this and you know I, i'll bring it back to the animals as well because when i was first diagnosed with cptsd and i went back to india after going through some therapy i read a big book and i can't remember the name of it and the book is actually still sitting in my trunk in india but it was about the way animal it was helping people who have anxiety disorders understand what's happening in a physiological air, arena in their body and this, this writer, the psychiatrist, talked about how when, if you have a, a, a herd of impala or deer or something and a prey animal is coming to attack, the animals do one of three things. They either fight back, they, they run, or they freeze. Yeah. Now, I'm a freezer. And they talk about when the animals freeze, it's because they can't uh, outrun their prey or can't fight them and so they're taking a gamble by freezing what do i mean by this if they freeze then their, their nervous system if they get eaten on the spot it's not going to feel as painful but also what typically tends to happen in the wild is when they freeze the lion or the tiger or whatever will take the body back to their den because they think it's dead leave it in the den and then go hunt some more and so then the animal can get up and walk away well after yeah. the animal gets up and walks away what does it do it shakes it shakes, it starts to shake. It literally shakes it off. That's how we get that saying, shake it off. And then it can go about its business. But what humans tend not to do is they hold the energy, but then they don't release it. Absolutely. And so with the kickboxing, what you're allowing to happen is what nature does anyway. And so we know, we know that anger, when people have a lot of anger come up, where does anger come from? Well, it comes from extreme hurt. It mm -hmm. comes from abandonment. It comes from betrayal. It comes from all these things. And that anger needs to be honored. You're angry for, your anger is justified. But what can't happen is that we don't express it and we end up taking the anger out on someone else. And so what the kickboxing does is it allows for you to have that moment to like the shaking of the wild animal to release the energy that this hurt caused. And I know a lot of people in the kickbox will afterwards have moments of crying where they have another release. And I wanted to bring it back because when I, when I saw how many people were affected by this, I remembered that book about yeah. explaining it in nature, that this is what you're, you are no different from nature. The only difference between you and the animal is that our complex thinking gets us in trouble. 
and you know. I'm doing a really brilliant talk next week on this with a yoga guru uh, um exactly that and you've hit on so many important points there so for example the freeze response um is something that all of nature uses so those of us have got cats will see when a cat catches a mouse the mouse or the bird will freeze in the hope that then the the, uh, the cat will let it go and then it can escape and it is you but if you look at young children playing particularly young boys but when you look at toddlers or really young children they will use a lot of physical they will engage in physical fighting and yeah. then society teaches them it's not not you know the, the thing to do but if you look at any young animal it doesn't matter whether it's a predator animal or a play animal the young always engage in fighting so for example because one, that's a tool that they need to either capture their prey, escape the prey, um, and stick up for themselves. So it's developing the right muscles. And what's happened with humans over time is we've been so um, socialized to a point that we move our bodies so little now. You know, it wasn't that long ago, probably when I was told, where the average tr tr person was moving 20 kilometers plus a day. And now we're so sedentary, we've lost this ability. And it's just as important, all these different forms of exercise that you're reintroducing to people. It's so important to experiment and see what do you need now? And we can talk on to what's an avoidance and what is, you know, moving into the challenge, because that's really important. But for me, um, because of the stage I'm currently at in my life and, and sort of where I'm at, I feel I've got quite a good tapping into what my body needs now, what I'm not getting into my day to day activities. Absolutely. Yes, I need to do more stretching without a doubt. Um, but the physical fast things is something that I don't use, say, when I'm with the animals, because when I'm in the animals, for me to communicate, make them feel safe, that's all about taking my energy levels down and being a calm, confident president presence with them. Whereas when I can really let rip in something like the kickboxing, for me, it's such a fantastic physical and emotional release. And I am like a different person after it. And I think this is where one of the things you've had everyone doing, which is so, so important, and all the health coaches I've worked with over years will always do this, is tuning into your body. This is where the journaling is so, so valuable. What are you feeling? What are you really feeling physically, emotionally, spiritually after the food, after the exercise? What feelings have you suppressed around that? So, for example, when I was doing some of the yoga and the bar ones you were doing i always was incredibly fit when i was younger i did sport was my thing i did gymnastics i did horse riding i did hockey i did athletics you know everything i loved every single sport and i was really really good at it and then you know i've had the children i've got the animals um the last two years i've probably work-wise been more sedentary than ever and suddenly i was realizing wow i've lost so much of my flexibility and that brought up so many emotions. I mean, as a gymnast, I could literally bend myself into any position you wanted. But what that brought up in me was so many mixed emotions about letting go of where I was and not comparing. You always say it, you know, don't compare. I it, What I was doing when I was 20 now, I wouldn't swap that journey, but I'm in a different stage and my body's needing to do different things. And then when I free up a bit more time, I'll go on to the next stage. So I think experimenting with these different things is something, unless someone pushes us into, we often don't do. But when we do do it, we realize not only does it really check in, because when you're doing these exercises, classes, whether it's kickboxing, whether it's a yoga, whether it's the bar, you cannot lie to yourself. You can't lie to yourself. You're getting really, really honest feedback. And how many times in our life at the moment with this world of political correctness do we get really honest feedback? Oh, the body doesn't lie. Mm. The body, I mean, that's one of the books that I promote is the body keeps the score. You yeah. know, if you can, your, your ego, can, your mind can lie to you all day, but the body isn't going to, you know? And so when you get into, that's why I, I just, and I think for a lot of people, you hit on a really important topic too, Catherine. I think a lot of us, especially um, those of us that were engaged in sports growing up, there was a competitive nature, which is the nature of sport. And there's something to learn from that. Like I keep saying, I can't stand this whole, everyone gets a participation, or particip participation trophy now because 
if I had a kid, I would almost rather them lose. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you learn more that way. So there is something to learn from the competition. There's value there. But when we take exercise and put it into a modality of spiritual healing, one of the triggers is going to be the programming of competition. Yeah. And, you're, and that's why I wanted with this. And that's why I specifically pick teachers on YouTube. So, and I specifically ask people to do this alone. If they, I know some of their kids are getting involved, which is fantastic, but um, so that you don't have eyes watching you and so that yeah. you can feel more freedom to mess up or to be a flop shop or to like not you know, take a while to get something and then see because no one is watching you because there's no one around to trigger you see where you are triggering yourself because in reality you're always just triggering yourself you're always the ego the we can use the ego as a, as a way of benefit in this to show us where we are not being vulnerable with our own selves. And I read something in the Hathor material yesterday. It says, the th they said the thing you fear the most is usually the thing you want the most. Yeah. And so when we, when we see those attachments to where we're kind of blocking ourselves, we see it comes from our fear, which usually that's the fear of not being good enough. That's the fear of, and I know I, I did a video about this yesterday, you know, when we're going through these emotions that come up, that's, that's, the point of being in a human body is to have a nervous system and to feel things. You know, Marnie Alton says that in her classes all the time, we feel things here. We came yeah. to earth to feel things. And so none of those feelings are wrong. You know, they're all feelings come from thought. So something happened to you, a thought was formed around it and it created emotional feeling. Now what tends to happen is sometimes we don't remember the story. The, the thought that actually created the feeling or we don't remember that as, as our friend Shanti says, the story is the drama of it. Let it go. What we're working with is the feeling. And I even find, I was finding in the conversations that people felt like they had to have a reason. This is what I find really, really interesting. Yeah. You don't. And I just want to tell you like, like it's almost like we have to prove that we're even worthy of feeling pain or feeling anger. And that, and I caught that. I was like, the fact that you're alive and that you are breathing right now is all the worth you need. There's You don't have to know why. Sometimes we do know why. Sometimes we do know what happened to cause it, but sometimes we don't. And my therapist said something to me, and I'm a huge, I know a lot of people have very mixed feelings about therapists, but I loved my trauma therapist. She was very incredible for me in my journey of healing. And she used to always say, if you can't remember the story, there's a reason why. And we have and this, to honor that. Yeah, this is what I think. And we see it with animals all the time is, yes, they will have a visceral reaction. So, for example, if you've got an abused dog and the same situation presents itself, their body will react in that way. But they're not sitting there pondering about it. Because the thing is, when you think about it, and again, there is no right or wrong in this, but it's accepting what your body, what your mind is showing you. Because... Also, there's been so many studies shown that, that our memories are so flawed anyway. Yeah. Our memories are not true. You know, we talk, we've talk. we talked so much over the last few years about truth, what is truth. But most of the time, we'll never know what truth is because we don't even know ourselves. You've only got to see that by how many people you've got a group of friends and a situation will arise and you'll all recount a different version because we're always putting it through our own filter. So for me, I'm the type of personality where I don't need to go back and see what the recall. Sometimes, as you say, it comes up, but other times, because for me, I would then equate that with associating that root cause with someone else. And then you start to get blame and judgment coming into it. Now, again, there's no what's right for me to do. It, it will be completely different to someone else watching this. But um I, I do question people when they do some forms of therapy, and I've seen many people go through this, where there's this obsession between finding the event, and I certainly don't need to do that. But what I do need to recognise is when something's still affecting me and I haven't let go of it, and then, you know, okay, it's all about what do I need to do to get rid of it rather than actually, um, you know, worrying about what caused it in the first place. 100 I'm so yeah and the way and I, I hope you guys heard what she said there because this is where it gets into like 
the yoga sutras as well. So when we have karma, and again, all karma is, is action and reaction. We, as the experiencer of the karma, label it as good or bad through our thoughts, right? And so if something were to happen, if, if Catherine and I were to experience the exact same karma, if the exact same action happened to me and Catherine, we would both experience two different reactions to it because of our held thought patterning. I hope that makes sense. So what we're working with, and that's what she hit on, the story doesn't matter. Your experience is what matters because that's the, that's what your body is registering. So that's what we're working with. You know, I've told the story before um, in India. There's a problem sometimes in the area where I practice where men in scooters will come and grope you, right? Women. And Shrat's had to deal with it. It's it's. But I got my boob grabbed once and I didn't even react to it because I, I was like, jokes on them. My boob's really sweaty right now. That's gross. But somebody else had the same thing happen to them, and it was like the end of the world. They were a basket yeah. case. But through the lens of perception, the same action, yes, it was inappropriate. He shouldn't have done that. But my reaction to it was like, you know, and maybe it's because worse things have happened to me. So I had a different perception. Verse, or maybe that person had had something really bad happen to them as a child, and it brought up that reaction. Who knows? But the reaction was different. And so we're looking at that nugget of that reaction because that's where the truth is in your own thought process. And that's when we're looking at this, we're seeing that our thoughts, like I always say, the reason why the controllers don't like yoga is because yoga is the antidote to mind control. Absolutely. And the philosophy of yoga does not have to be used in yoga classes. You can take the philosophy that Patanjali wrote in the sutras and add it into any modality because it's really just observing you. And so nobody else matters. It's you. Why are you reacting this way? And, and then when you start to understand this, you then start to control your own mind. Your mm -hmm. the mind is not controlling you anymore. You are controlling your own mind. So you start to see the truth through the illusion. And that's, that's the nugget. And, and it's never over, guys. As long as you are living, breathing, and you have a brain in your head, you're going to be hitting up these little obstacles where you go, okay, as Ram Dass, I love it. And that's what, you know, like, we're seeing it now. Like, a lot of people are having a lot of triggers with the all meditation that I that I gave them where they don't. I'm loving it. I've been watching that. I've been a bit quiet in this group this week because I've had quite a lot of other things that I've needed to deal with. So, sorry, I haven't participated much. I will do. But I was really noticing that, but not having a chance to respond. But it's so interesting. I loved the on meditation and I've been doing it with my two dogs and Lola, my dog on the floor there who's really sensitive to all this the one who i think i've spoken before reacts really powerfully to the wayne dyer i am that i am and starts howling like a wolf she when i started doing the om meditation and i was doing the oms along with it she was coming and nudging me and joining in and everything it was having a profound effect on her was her sister indy on the sofa this is a classic example those two have come from the same rescue place for they're from the same litter, but their personalities are inherently different. So whereas Lola has got a fight response, Indy has got a freeze or flight response. Whereas when we have these vibrational frequencies going on, Indy would go deeper into herself. Lola will come and need to interact me because you, you, so it's so fascinating to see. And this is why this is so great, these different things we experience, because I, I'm absolutely loving the on one. It's really working for me. For other people, it's having very different effects on them. So it's so fascinating. We can learn so much more doing this in a group yeah. than doing this in ourselves. Because when you when you were just doing it myself, I, I wouldn't have thought that deeply about it, because for me, it was having this reaction. So I think, OK, this is it is. For other people, it's having a completely different reaction. And yes. there's no right or wrong at all. Oh, it's just your experience. And that's and I, I know today on the challenge, I have people get to pick whether they do the OM or the sound bowl healing. And I actually encouraged the group, if the OM is triggering you, you pick the OM. Yeah. Because that's that's what Ram Dass says when he goes, interesting, interesting. So half of the people really res like really felt a sense of of peace, but others we're really triggered. Yeah. Interesting. It's the same thing. It's the same action. It's the same recording. And so for the people that are really triggered, I'm like, 
This is where the telenovela is. This is where it's juicy. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you're triggered. You might not know why you're triggered. You might never know why you're triggered. The point is that it's this all meditation has given you an opportunity. It said, okay, here you go. Yeah. Here's something to look at that you didn't know was existing. Your body is giving you an answer or giving you uh, an ops. And uh, Marnie Alton says, they're not obstacles, they're puzzles. Mm -hmm. They're puzzles for you to, to work in. And you don't, and, and I told somebody too, like, we don't know when these triggers are going to pass. They're going to pass when they need to pass. Exactly. And the all meditation might piss you off for a year. And then all of a sudden one day you relax into it because you exercise, you exhausted whatever needed to be burnt out in you in order for you to be free of that. Mm. And so that's the power. And I think that's the biggest thing people are understanding when things get hard, when they get interesting, you don't run. You stay. What happens if, if if something's so uncomfortable and this time you decide to stay instead of turn around and leave? And we had a comment from the last time the person said, you know, I talk about my teacher, David Grieg, who I really saw this reflected in him because he would get so excited when like a 60 year old man who was overweight and couldn't touch his toes would come into the shala because now we had something to work with. Now there was resistance. There was something we could work with. Whereas the more flexible, athletic, younger people, it wasn't, there wasn't as much to work with. And somebody asked, well, what about the people who are athletic and flexible? You just got to push harder then. Because that's the, 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 if your body is already to a level where it can, it can handle stuff, then you're going to have to go deeper into the practice, deeper yeah. into the to find that resistance. And that's why I always say, David, you know, a lot of times people who are overweight or not athletic get intimidated about coming into a yoga class or an exercise class, but no, your karma is going to come up early. So therefore you're the lucky one. Mm -hmm. The ones who have to really push themselves to get to that place. They're, they got a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So don't be, don't be ashamed of that because your karma, that's what we're, we're trying to get to that point where there's that friction, where there's that strike of the match. And for some people, that's going to be right at the beginning. And some people, it's going to be three months down the road. It just depends on what you have agreed to experience. If I hope that makes sense. Yeah, completely. And I think this is a whole thing is about how much are we really experiencing life? Um, you know, I will come back to again, so many of us are in stages of our, you know, everyone watching this will be in a different stage of their life. You know, if you're running around after a few small children, you know, you're not necessarily going to be able to find an hour to sit there and exercise yourself, but that's fine. It's like, okay, well, what can I do? What, what can I do that's going to serve me and mix things up a bit um, and concentrate on what you can do, not what you can't do. And I think also embracing all the different stages of life that we are at and everything, you know, I, I'm like, I like it when I hear the feel the tweaks and see this and see the scars and things like this, because they've all got, they're all part of living life. They're all part yeah. of me and what's made me me. And um, I think it's, you know, fascinating. Like I've got big, you can't really see it too clearly here, but I've got a big lump out of my nose here where I got a direct hit just before my wedding with a hockey ball and left half my nose on the pitch. <laughs> So, um, and uh, yeah, it was hysterical. And, and uh, you know, so every time I feel this, here's a gymnastics injury, the lump in my lip where I put my over rotated on a vault and put, and so when I feel them, it like takes you right back there. So I think this is lovely in terms of also not aiming for perfection, but aiming to challenge ourselves because I, for one, will put my hand up and say, for the last few years, I've done very little that will physically challenge me. F physically, I've done lots of other areas of my life where I've challenged myself, um, like just doing videos. I hate seeing myself on video. I absolutely hate it. I hate listening to myself. But I've done it anyway. But on the physical side of things, I'd really let that go. The only thing I've done over the last two years to physically challenge myself is introducing what I've spoken about a lot, the cold showers. Mm -hmm. And that was a biggie for me because it's cold, it's damp. In the UK, a lot of our houses are very old. They're quite damp. They're cold. They're, you know, um, can I do it easily when I'm on holiday in Greece? No problem. Love it. It's a pleasure when it's freezing cold and I'm just about to go out to the horses and you're shivering anyway. But that I, I hadn't challenged my body. So I'm really enjoying now saying, 
yeah now I really want to challenge it and see what what can I start doing how how far have I let myself slip and more importantly what am I going to do about it that's another thing people are having a actually enjoying and I keep telling people like I'm telling you this five minute cold shower is going to be the thing you take that you love the most out of this experience because it does take your nervous system into a totally different reality and to into that that's that calmness where you feel the coldness and you're immediately want to move but you bring your your breath into it and you calm yourself down and you stay you stay and so many people are finding such benefit from the calm showers. And I shared one of went Hoff's videos to begin to begin. They were like, you know, he says to scream in the shower. I don't know if I can do that. I can't do that because I live in an apartment building. I'll have the cops outside thinking I'm being yeah. murdered or something. But but yeah, like you just you you just it's 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 so it's so life changing. I can't even like describe what cold showers have done for me, what cold therapy has done for me. I live in a relatively warm part of the world. And so yeah. I'm a baby when it comes to cold, but cold therapy is something that I will probably do for the rest of my life because it just does something to your body, it does something to your mind, and especially after exercising, it, it when your body's already in a state of flow and your blood's already pumping. You know, and that's the thing, too. If we look at the physiology of, of exercise, your blood is your sacred DNA and getting it to move back into the heart to cleanse itself is also benefiting your healing process emotionally as well, too, because the physi the body and the, uh, the emotions are one and the same. And so it's just it's groundbreaking of what what we can actually learn about ourselves when we allow ourselves to get into the shadow side of who we are. And that's what this is. All these uncomfortable feelings. We have people in the chat saying that they're getting really tired right now. And I said, that's normal. Your body's creating new, new patterns. If you need to go to bed a couple of hours early, honor that. Sleep some more. You know, um, we've had people say, oh, I am getting a low-grade fever now. Perfect. We call it the yoga fever. Your body, when you burn a compost pile, you burn it to get rid of it. And we can't, when we're creating new patterns of thought, really, through the body, we can't put new patterns on top of old patterns it doesn't work it's not wallpaper you can't just wallpaper over an old pattern you have to actually get rid of the old pattern in order Absolutely. to create new and so all these things people are discovering i i think again that's the most groundbreaking thing and it was groundbreaking for me too when i first really got into that oh oh i see where i want to run is where i should stay because that's where the magic is and also, don't you find it so fascinating um, for, to look at this really shows how much you want something, how much you want change in your life, because we're all very good. You know, we talk about gratitude journals. And again, that's another thing we're doing. And I love the gratitude side of things. But it says a lot that we have to put a habit in place to appreciate the things in life because our minds, our human minds naturally go to first what we don't like normally obviously i'm generalizing there'll be some people watching that don't but generally speaking most adults will go to what they don't like first and what i love about when you set yourself any sort of challenge is how easily you're tempted to give up will really show how important it is to you and and if it's not that important to you that's an important thing to recognize but then also stop moaning about it <laughs> You know, I mean, seriously, it's like if it really so many people will say, you know, you've got to burn the bridges because so many people will wait until something absolutely catastrophic happens to make the change. And that's absolutely one way of doing it. Um, but if it's that important with you, you will find a way to do it. Yes. And you, you hit on something, too, that we talk a lot about in the yoga world as well, because people often think, oh, it's all flexibility. And I always say, I don't even talk about flexibility with my students, but I talk about strength, getting stronger. Mm -hmm. You will never be your your body, your physical body will never be strong enough in yoga. You'll always be pushed to get stronger. But something happens to you, phys uh, your, you mentally, when all of a sudden, this is what we call the Mysore magic, where something that seemed impossible to do for you, one day all of a sudden starts to become possible. And mm. then something in your mind starts to create a new pattern at that point where you felt powerless, you now feel powerful. Mm. And so we think about that, that. That's what we mean by self-healing because look at what's happening around the world right now. We won't go too far into it because of censorship, but if we all felt healed these wounds and took our power back and realized that we actually are strong beings, 
when that transition starts to happen in a healthy way, the bad guys can't exist anymore because then we feel, we feel powerful saying no. Absolutely. We don't hover when we say no, when we know our body is strong and we, we prove to ourselves in that yoga room or in that bar class or in that can we prove to ourselves how strong we are? We're unstoppable. We're unstoppable. And, and there's so many different ways to do this, depending on what your circumstances are. So when I went a few weeks ago to the Conference of Human Evolution in London, there's this gorgeous, gorgeous scientist called Dr. Rupert Sheldrake there. I don't know how many of you have heard of him. But he did a really interesting talk about the, all the different types of just briefly touching loads of different types of spiritual journeys people go on. So you could go on a pilgrimage. But one of the things I found fascinating that I hadn't found, heard someone talk about before is even competitive sport can be a real spiritual journey for people because anyone who's competed in competitive sport at whatever level, when you're on that football pitch or when you're on that ice rink or when you're whatever, whether it's an individual sport or a team sport, when you're actually in the middle of that match or the event or the routine, you are so in a state of flow. Oh, you're it, you're meditating. Shut out, and yeah. you are literally in a state of flow. So you can achieve this state of flow through so many different ways. You know, some people will do it by needing, depending on what else is going on, by needing to quiet themselves down. Other people might need to do a more aggressive but you can still get into a state of flow doing boxing absolutely you yeah. know this this is what i love is the possibilities are endless when you accept that and one of the things i've had to work really hard and i still am and it's brought up again this challenge is the comparison side of things so when i was seeing everyone that they were getting to bed really early and doing things like this now i already had a lot of things in my schedule for november so I haven't been getting, there's only a couple of nights I've managed to get to bed by 10, which was lovely. And I could feel this resentment coming up. And then I was like, but hang on a minute. I'm so grateful for what I've been doing in that time. And this is just even, I understand it's in my emotional, physical best interest to do that. But equally, it, these opportunities are great and I can do it next month. Yes. And I want and that's why I always say this 30 day challenge is just a template. It's yes. just a template. Um, one of my favorite things in the world is Broadway. I love Broadway. Now, when those actors and actresses are on stage and they're they're the triple threat, they can sing, dance, and act, you best believe they're in a state of flow or meditation. Absolutely. You know? But they don't go to bed until like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning because yeah. they work in the evening. And so different lifestyles are going are gonna to provide you with different obstacles and different re realities basically and, and it, nothing is wrong nothing is bad this is just a way for you guys to experiment to see and the reason why i put it before 10 is i wanted people to start to understand that different times of day have different it's so important though because during that 10 to 12 o'clock i mean i've done loads of sort of study on the physiology of it is is when your physical body repairs itself and when you can't um do that when you go when you go to bed and say okay, I'm going to bed at one o'clock in the morning and I'm just going to sleep in. It doesn't work like that. Your body still hasn't got the rhythm. But when you're a teenager or a young person, you can cope with that because your body's resilience is a thing. So a lot of it, I think, is just the awareness of understanding the impact of your decisions and then making conscious decisions. So yeah. I could absolutely have chosen to clear my diary and go to bed by 10 o'clock, but I made a conscious decision not to. But what I did notice is the emotions it brought up in me when I was seeing everyone else doing it. And then that brought me right back into my comparison mind frame. And I was like, oh, here you go again. But you've made a conscious decision to at the moment not do that this week because you've decided that you're going to do that. And 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 how grateful that I've got that choice. How yes. Great well, that's the ebb and flow. And again, Catherine is completely correct. When we start to study the energies of the day, it the, every energy that has a dosha to it as well and so that's just you and i always say the reason why i put self-study saturday being the dosha study is because i get so many questions about the dosha but i'm like if you if you sit down and actually study them they make sense and when yeah. you start to understand it you start to go aha so now that i know what this is i can work with it and mm. so i know that if there's a time in my life where i can't go to bed before 10 i understand how I can now 
maybe rectify that in another way during the day or something, right? <laughs> so, excuse me. So, call yourself in other ways that are going to do it. Absolutely. Not, I always say 10 to 2, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is pitta time. So that's mm -hmm. a very fiery time. And so that is when if the body is in a sleep state, that is when the body is energetically going to be using the energies of the of the time to start to heal itself. And But also, Catherine's a mom. We have a lot of mothers watching right now. And I always say mothers because I think when kids get sick in the middle of the night, it's always mom they scream for, not dad. But um, when your kid got a stomach bug and started projectile vomiting at night, guarantee you it was between that 10 p.m. and 2 o'clock hour. Because Absolutely. when it would trigger it to come up. Right. Um, and so and so you go, aha, OK, so if my kid's vomiting at 11 o'clock at night, his body or her body is using the energy to detox, to purge. OK, you know, and, and I say moms again, too, because my mom tells a story where one time my dad, when I was a baby, my dad told my mother that she could go. He would sleep in the nursery with me. So he could get up with me so she could have the night to sleep. And he slept in the nursery with me. She said she heard me crying. I kept crying. I kept crying. She walked in the nursery. My dad was sound asleep, sleeping through me crying. So I always say mom. I know, yeah. I know there's great dads out there too, but it's usually the mom that's up being thrown up on. It changes your whole sleep cycle. I can resonate with that completely. <laughs> But yeah, the whole of this thing is it's just we're having such fun with the journey, experimenting, challenging yourself to try new things. It's so important when we're a child, by the very nature of being a child, every day is a challenge because you're constantly going through new experiences, learning new skills, learning new things. And then we get to sort of being an adult, which I don't think I've reached yet. And we can sort of forget to have these challenges in there. But actually, it's such a sense of achievement when you challenge yourself. And you, it's not about how far you've got. It's just you've done something, as you said, continually. If you've only done 15 or 30 minutes of it, that's 15 or 30 minutes. And you'd have done without that. Fantastic. Go with it. Yeah. And one thing, too, before we, we jump off here, I want to express as well, like, I talked about this and enjoy the journey too. Mm -hmm. Like, don't try to rush through the exercise. Don't try to rush through. I, my, my, my youngest niece is a little bit over a year old and my sister posted a video of, of her sitting in her dad's lap and her dad's truck. And she was obsessed with the air conditioning and my sister filmed it. And may my niece just kept like touching the vent and like, just being in that moment and to see her little hair, her she's got a mullet right now because that's how her hair is growing in. <laughs> it's like a little mullet, but seeing it roll back and just watching her just be in that moment with that air on her face. Like, and I and I, I kept rewatching it. I was like, what can I learn from that? Mm. Like, take that moment to enjoy every aspect of this, the good, the bad, the ugly, because as Alan Watts says, as I said in my previous video, the point of life is to be alive. So be Absolutely. alive, enjoy it all, even the hard stuff. <laughs> and laugh at yourself. When I watched your video yesterday, if you're doing the yoga, I was thinking, I can't remember, there's someone on social media and she's a lot bigger a woman and she takes the piss out of all these people doing these brilliant poses. And I was yes. thinking, that is what I'd have been like. So there was you doing your one and then I could have done the joke version alongside and it would have been not a pretty sight, I tell you. Um, I love her. He's on my favourite accounts. He's hysterical. I can't even remember. I'm so sorry. I can't remember what her name because I haven't looked at it for ages. But it's hysterical because so many of us can identify that we're that version. <laughs> it's hysterical well you guys let us know down in the comment section below how you're doing i again as we're all doing this together and as Catherine says it's so important for us to each share our experiences the good the bad the ugly because that's what that, that can resonate with someone else to make them understand what they're feeling isn't wrong and that it's all just a journey it's listen the destination is the grave so let's enjoy the journey because literally we're just going from cradle to grave and so be here in the journey be here now Wherever you are, be grateful that you can actually feel things because there are psychopaths out there who can't. So when those that person comes up, be like, at least I'm not a psychopath. So um, I might be the hot mess express, but at least I feel things, you know, and, and understand the more, as I said yesterday, the more you get into your own emotions, the more you're going to recognize and have that compassion for others as well. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's the world we want to live in. And so you guys are doing awesome. I'm so, I'm so, we're at day 10. So we're a third of the way through guys. Yay. Don't you didn't come this far to get this far. Keep going. You've got yeah. this. 
Yes. So we're all proud of you and we're all the signal group. So if you haven't joined the signal group, I will put that link in the, in the description box below. I'm in there. Catherine's in there. Stephanie, Emmy, Mornay, Shante. We're all Shanti. We're all in there. So um, pop on in and it's great conversations. Great friendships are being formed over this. So, um, so we love you guys. Keep going. Keep sweating. Keep, keep sweating. sweating. <laughs> and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, Bye guys.